एंड वेलकम टू न्यूज क्लिक टूडे वी हैव विद अस सोशल एक्टिविस्ट तीस्ता सी तलवार विद हूम वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द लेटेस्ट अटैक लॉन्च बाय गुजरात पुलिस ऑन हर एंड जावेद आनंद एंड ऑल्सो अबाउट द जजमेंट गिवन बाय गुजरात हाई कोर्ट द सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैड वॉन्ट गुजरात गवर्नमेंट अर्लियर ऑन द फॉल्स केसेस दैट दे हैव रजिस्टर्ड अगेंस्ट हर एंड हर हजबेंड एंड सी जे पी विच आर द केसेज दैट हैव बिन फ्रेम्ड अगेंस्ट यू प्रीवियसली एंड वॉट्स दियर सिचुएशन टूडे See, since the targeted attack began from 2004 onwards, ever since the Citizen for Justice and Peace, the organization that I represent, consistently gave legal aid to the survivors of 2002 and did not simply stop at documentation and uh, this thing. The first was the charge by the star witness in the Best Bakery case, Zaira Sheikh, who accused me of kidnapping and all sorts of charges. At which point, I requested the Supreme Court. I applied to the Supreme Court for an independent investigation. the supreme court appointed a high level registrar general inquiry that exonerated me and my organization completely and unfortunately ms sheikh had to undergo uh, one year simple imprisonment because of the perjury that she committed lying on oath then again we had so that was one in connection with that incident there was an fir which was finally quashed by the high court after that Uh, uh, of, uh, and in all the subsequent cases, unfortunately, a former employee of CJP has been used as a pawn by the powerful in Gujarat and now at the centre to simply consistently attack us, uh, try to malign us. Fortunately, that's not succeeded, and also to derail us from our activities of giving uh, consistent legal aid. What I'd like to explain is it's for the first time in the history of independent India that cases related to mass communal violence. we've had judicial remedy of the, to, to the extent that 117 powerful accused have been convicted to life imprisonment this has never happened before and this is all thanks to the efforts of cjp its legal team in gujarat in delhi mumbai and i'm the front face of the organization and my husband and colleague javed anand is also a trustee the reason for targeting us in this vindictive and sickening way with false suits is simply to demoralize the victims to distract from our work and to send a message for the future that nobody in future should come to the legal help of victims of communal violence that is the conspiracy behind this entire malefied invest uh, charges and we are absolutely pained and shocked to the extent of falsehood that the prosecution armed with powerful lawyers like jit milani etc have gone to mislead the honorable gujarat high court we are absolutely shocked mm-hmm. the other charges against me related to tutoring of witnesses uh, falling filing false affidavits uh, digging up mass graves in pandarwana and all these were the instances of a former employee who is now working in cohorts with the powerful in gujarat and in delhi at the center i must emphasize that trial court judgments special courts appointed by the supreme court that went into the sardarpura case where 33 people were killed narura patia case where uh, uh, you know 124 people according to us and 96 people according to the charge sheet were killed both trial judges have said there was no question of tutoring so the judgments have come out in our favor and still the persistence and the viciousness of the attack by the gujarat state the rss minded and the vhp minded lawyers in gujarat who appear for the state and now the center are consistently targeting me and my organization not only is there danger of this kind of attack there's a danger of physical attack i mean if you look at the kind of fortunately the other we are a 65 say 70 year old democracy so there are some democratic institutions and therefore we have applied to the supreme court saying protect us we are i repeat we are not against an independent investigation we are not against transparency we gave 1500 pages of original account documentation to disprove every one of the malicious charges and we were shocked to see that the 63 page judgment of the gujarat high court only takes into consideration what the io and jethmalani says and and disregards all the evidence we put forward i mean we are shocked at the injustice of the judgment what are the charges that have been framed against you in the recent case the charges are first related in the fir related to the gulberg memorial which was a common dream of the survivor some of the survivors and us that we should memorialize the entire 2002 carnage carn- from gujarat uh, gulberg society and maybe a memorial could be set up between 2007 and 2012 efforts were made but we realized that the sheer pressure on our human resources for the legal aid plus the fact that the land prices have gone up makes that dream very difficult so finally 
that by 2012 the Gulberg Society told all the individual members that the memorial is not likely to come out so therefore they are free to sell their properties on their own. Never was a single pie raised by any of our trust from the victims. The money that donor organizations have given us legitimately under FCRA is for the wide activities of Sabrang Trust and CJP, not for the Gulberg Memorial. Only about 4.6 lakhs has been collected for the memorial which is still lying as unutilized. This entire campaign is meant to cripple us financially. Our accounts have been frozen for over a year without notice being given to us. And we are living in a democracy with standards of transparency. It's shocking that criminals are being let off by the courts, policemen who have committed crimes, and citizens like us who have worked for justice for the poor are being targeted like this. So seems like High Court judgment is based on the investigating officer's report while your affidavit has been ignored. Yes. So how do you see it? We are completely and bitterly aggrieved by the Gujarat High Court judgment. And it's not the first time that we've been similarly aggrieved. I repeat, the 63-page Gujarat High Court judgment completely and utterly disregards the affidavits filed by us on 31st of March 2014, 18th of June 2014, July 2014, the material given to the I.O. when we appeared before the police, Javed Anand and I appeared on two occasions before the police, and another large affidavit filed by us on 9th of January 2015 and again on 23rd of January 2015. These affidavits by themselves are simply averments. With these affidavits, there are 1500 pages of our original account records disproving the malicious allegations about wine, jewelry and branded shoes, which is deliberately made, by the way, to prejudice the judges. If we, if we drink wine in Mumbai, it's not a criminal offence. The point is, wine, jewellery and shoes were paid for from the personal accounts of Javed and myself, never by the trust. But deliberately, this malicious information is being spread so that the judge sitting the judge's chair gets pre prejudiced. What shocks us is that we produce the bank statements before the judge. We produce the accounts to show that we were reimbursed only to the extent of tickets bought for lawyers or ourselves and any expenses for the objectives of the trust. The rest of the expenses in the same common credit card statement were paid from our personal income. So how should our personal income and our lifestyle be of any interest to the I.O. except with a malicious and a filthy habit which is typically RSS, typically fascist, to prejudice the judges sitting in the judges. Well, we are pinning our hopes on the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has given us uh, uh, protection. First, they gave it for a day. Now, they've given it to us for a week. And on the 19th of February, we'll have a full-fledged hearing. Uh, we believe our case is very, very strong. We believe we have done no wrong. We have audited our accounts on time. We have submitted audited accounts to the income tax, to the FCRE of the Home Ministry, and to the Charity Commissioner. For some period, there was some technical issue of the Charity Commissioner. There was some slip between our auditors and the Charity Commissioner. So under the Act itself, you're exempted. You're, you're, you can file them a bit late. But they were audited on time. They were never not audited on time. We have eminent trustees on our board who have stood by us through thick and thin. They even issued a statement yesterday. And we believe that we have a very strong case. I would like to repeat that if, there was, if this was a bona fide investigation, like I said at the time of the Zaira Sheikh case in 2004, let the highest court in the land appoint a special investigation supervised by the Supreme Court. We have no problems. But we do have problems with the Gujarat Police and the Bhat Police Crime Branch conducting this witch hunt, deliberately misguided by the likes of Jit Malani, simply to ensure that we are paralyzed from functioning. That is unjust, that is what we will battle, that is what we will resist. If all our accounts needed to be scrutinized, we are prepared. As long as the Supreme Court supervises the investigation, we are fully ready for it. But please remember that the Gujarat Crime Branch and the Gujarat Police have been prosecuted against by CJP. In the Zakia Jafri case, which we are aiding and abetting uh, Mrs. Jafri, where the powerful have been, are sought to be arraigned as accused and charge sheeted, including now the man who sits as Prime Minister. The man who is Commissioner of Police, Ahmedabad today, the Joint Police com uh, the Commissioner of the Crime Branch, all of them have been arraigned in that complaint. So that is why there is this vendetta against us, because we are seeking to show 
through the justice process even today that what happened in 2002 in 14 of the 25 districts of Gujarat was not a spontaneous outburst but both calibrated, calculated, pre-planned conspiracy bringing the bodies of the Godara victims to Ahmedabad. Shivanand Jha, the today's police commissioner Ahmedabad was the man who allowed the parading of the bodies in a bloody funeral procession so that angers were raised, passions were fueled and blood was let on the streets of Ahmedabad.